Pretty cool, right? A whistle is one quite unique sound that we humans can easily create. When air flows at a certain pressure between our lips, it could create a whistle sound wave with a frequency between a certain range. Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to detect that frequency and control stuff around our house with just a whistle sound? In this video, we will see a basic and very easy whistle detecting circuit and also how to control any Arduino module with it. So let's get started! <laughs> What's up my friends, welcome back! This is how the project will go. Using a basic electric condenser microphone, we will detect sound. The microphone will pass the sound wave to an electric wave. Then, we should measure the frequency of the audio signal. Usually, the whistle sound wave is between 900Hz and 1.8kHz, depending on the person and the lips position. Finally, using the Arduino, we measure the period of the signal, and when the specified range frequency is detected, we activate our loop that for example, could turn on and off an LED, or a relay connected to a light bulb, or do anything else. That easy, we could control stuff with a whistle sound. So let's start the project. This is an electrode film microphone, which are the most commonly used microphones today, and they are very low cost. Sound travels through air in a form of a pressure wave. When that wave reaches the inside microphone capacitive plates, that will result in a voltage change. The microphone has an internal transistor that will amplify that signal. So all we have to do is to add a pull-up resistor of 10 kilo ohms in this case connected to 5 volts and the negative pin of the microphone connected to ground. You could identify the positive pin of the microphone looking at these three PCB lines here. I place the microphone on a breadboard and add the 10K pull-up resistor to 5 volts and the other pin connected to ground. Now I connect my oscilloscope probe to the output pin and observe the signal. Once I adjust the oscilloscope, as you can see, I can detect sound, but the peak-to-peak -peak value is very, very low and also have a lot of noise. So we definitely need to amplify this signal. For that, I've used an operational amplifier, or better said, an op-amp. This is the LM324, which is not a high-performance amplifier, but it will do the job more than perfect for this easy project. Besides, it has 4 amplifiers integrated in just one chip, and since we need to amplify the signals 2 times, this is great! Ok, so now I connect the output from the microphone to a 10 microfarad capacitor as a high pass filter, and in series with this capacitor, I'll connect a 1 kilo ohm resistor. The amplifier gain is given by these 2 resistors and this formula. I want a gain of 100, so the second resistor of this configuration should be 100 times bigger than the 1K ohm resistor. I place the op amp on the breadboard and add the 100K ohm resistor between the negative input pin and the output, which are pins 13 and 14. Now I supply 5 volts and ground to VCC and ground, which are pins 4 and 11 of the LM324. In order to set a certain offset of the output, I'll connect the positive pin, which in this case is pin 12, to the middle pin of a 10 turns potentiometer. The whistle wave, as you can see here, it's a sine wave, so it will be the same amount of time in the negative side as in the positive side. Since the maximum voltage in this project is 5 volts from the Arduino, I want to set the offset exactly in the middle of that voltage. I turn the potentiometer till I get 2.5 volts on the middle pin. And by the way, the other two pins of the potentiometer are connected to 5 volts and ground. Now I observe the output signal on the oscilloscope. I've used this app to create a sine wave sound. I set the frequency at 1.2 kHz and I put the smartphone close to the microphone. 
As you can see, the mic signal is around 20 or 30 millivolts peak to peak and full of noise. But the output from the op amp is close to 2 volts peak to peak. And if I get the phone even closer, it will saturate at 2.5 volts peak to peak, since that is the maximum voltage that we have. Ok, so now we have our signal amplified. The op amp configuration that we used is an inverting one. That's why the output signal is inverted as we can see here on my oscilloscope. When the input is positive, the output is negative and vice versa. Also, we still have a sine wave. What I want is a square wave with the same frequency as this signal. So for that I amplify the signal once again with the second amplifier and this will give me the square wave that I want. I connect the output from the first amplifier to the positive input of the second. The negative input of the second amplifier is connected once again to a potentiometer in order to set the middle voltage. The second configuration of the op amp is a comparator. It has an infinite gain, so we will have a positive pulse when the signal of the positive input is higher than the one set on the negative input. And we will have a low pulse when the input is below that set voltage on the negative pin. So I set the potentiometer to around 2.5 volts once again and observe the output on the oscilloscope. Great, I've got my square wave. As expected, I've got 5 volts when the input signal is above 2.5 volts and 0 volts when the input is below 2.5. That gives me the square wave with the exact same frequency as the first input signal and that's exactly what I wanted. Before we go to the Arduino part, I want to check my whistle frequency range. For that, I place the frequency label on the oscilloscope and whistle from the lowest to the highest pitch that I can. My range was between 800 Hz and 1.6 kHz. But I've tried the same test with a woman whistle and I've reached up to 2.5 kHz, so you should decide the range that you want to use in the code. Ok, now we've got our detecting circuit ready. Let's go over the Arduino part. I'll connect the second output from the amplifier to digital pin 8. I've used Arduino Uno for this test, but the code will work both with Arduino Nano and Mini as well. If you use Arduino Mega, you will have to change some registers, because that one won't use the same. Ok, so what we want is to measure the frequency of the input signal. For that, we will measure the time it takes the pulse to rise and then fall back again and multiply that by 2 since the sine wave will spend the same amount of time on both sides. That time will be the period of the signal and if we invert the period time, we get the frequency in Hertz. To do this, I've used pin change interruptions. And for that, we first have to add these two registers configuration before the setup loop. This configuration will make digital pin 8 create an interruption on both state changes. Any time that digital pin 8 in this case will change its value, we will enter an interruption routine or ISR. So when the signal will rise, I enter the interruption and start a time counter. When the pulse will fall, I enter the interruption once again and stop that counter. The difference between the present time and the last counter value will give me the width time of the pulse. I've used the micros function to count time, so the value will be in microseconds. This is the pulse width measurement interruption vector. In the void loop, I multiply the measured value by 2 in order to obtain the full signal period as said before. Now, I divide 1 by the period and get the frequency. Since I was working in microseconds, I have to multiply the frequency value by 1 million in order to obtain hertz from seconds, not from microseconds. That's it, now I've got the frequency. Using an if statement, I detect the range. In my case, I set that range between 800 Hz and 1.8 kHz. If the measured frequency is in that range, I will start a new counter, and I'll name that counter Pulse Counter. 
That's because I don't want just one square wave to have the desired frequency, because that will result in an error, where any sound could trigger the circuit. I want a bunch of them, one followed by the other. In this way, I will make sure that the signal is the one that I want, and not just a random noise. Any time that the measured frequency is not in the desired range, I reset the pulse counter. In this case, I need 16 pulses in a row, to have the frequency in the desired range. If I detect that, then I trigger the circuit. Increasing this number will decrease the sensitivity of the detecting circuit. Once the whistle is detected, I trigger digital pin 13, which will be connected to an LED, and also apply an analog signal to pin 3 connected to a buzzer. I upload the code to the Arduino and make all the connections, and let's give a test to this project. There you go, you can turn on and off the LED just by whistling. The circuit is immune to any random noise, as you can see here. I can play music, random noise in my room, or even clap. Only the whistle sound will trigger this circuit, and that's because the whistle sound is special. It creates a sound wave with constant frequency, equal time on both negative and positive parts of the signal, and also a defined range. So finding a random noise with the same characteristics is quite difficult. Not impossible, but difficult. Now, instead of an LED, I'll connect a relay to digital pin 13. By the way, you have all the schematics from this project in the description below, so check those out before starting the project. To the relay, I'll connect a 220 volts lamp. Be very careful when working with high voltages, and only connect the power when you're sure that the circuit is ready, or restrict your projects to a lower power component, as 5 volts or 12 volts. Now, anytime that I whistle, I will turn on and off the light of my room. Isn't that nice? The detector works from any corner of my room. I was amazed finding that it detects so well, even when I'm out of the room. I first wanted to make a key finder using this circuit, but the parts are too big to fit them inside of a key trinket, especially when I add the battery in order to be portable. For that case, we should use SMD components, cell battery, and probably an AT tiny chip instead of the Arduino, in order to keep the project size small. You could turn on and off lights, maybe an LED strip like this one, your music player, or make the Arduino make any other operation that you want, as for example, count the times that you whistle, and display them on the LCD. That's not useful, but it's cool because you made it. Here ends this project, and I hope that you've learned something new. You have all the schematics and part list below. The code that I've used is below as well. Make sure you read all the comments in each code, in order to understand it better. I've also uploaded a sketch that will print the frequency value on the serial monitor. That will come up handy when measuring your whistle frequency range, since not everyone has the same sound pitch as I do. In the description, you will also find my Patreon page, if you consider helping my project. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or on my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. If you consider helping my project, check my Patreon page as well, and also use the links that I provide below for the best price and also to help my workshop and keep my videos coming. Thanks again, and see you later guys!